There's an argument that the 60s began not in 1963, but in 59 with the Cuban Revolution. In the 60s, you were nothing if there wasn't a photographer on hand. And Fidel Castro, Che Guevara and the others were lucky in their court artist Alberto Corda in the background here. His image of Che appeared on the walls of student digs more dependably than damp. And even inspired revolutionaries closer to home, not all of them fictional. Power to the people! But not everyone was susceptible. I was never keen on t-shirts and badges at, at the time of the anti-apartheid struggle and the, the, the radicalism in which I grew up in British politics in the late 60s and 70s. I, always, uh, I was always interested in the Cuban revolution and very sympathetic to it as a battle for justice against a fascist dictator, but I never uh, had a starry-eyed view of, of Cuba or, or Che Guevara. The world wasn't used to seeing political leaders who looked like this. They embodied a revolutionary chic that just had not been seen before. You have to think of, you know, the traditionally men in power, and they were men, um, tends to be dressed in suits and uh, definitely without the beards. And, and they, there was something very different about these revolutionaries who were not afraid to dress in fatigues and carry rifles. Um, who seem to be very different. But they also, I think in terms of kind of the culture, they, they also encouraged uh, people to come to the island to see what it was like. Cuba has always been cool, though perhaps less so if you happen to be Cuban. The classic film Soy Cuba, I Am Cuba, which was using long uncut shots 50 years before Birdman, portrays the last years of the Batista regime, when the island was a flesh pot and casino for visiting foreigners. In Latin America, Cuba showed what was possible. After the Cuban Revolution, change, an alternative to capitalism, and an alternative to the kind of dictatorships that, you know, like Batistas, like Trujillo's, um, seemed possible. And this was a radically new opportunity for Latin America compared to what had happened before. Alongside Cuba's much vaunted achievements in health and education at home, anti-apartheid campaigners credit Castro's decision to send troops to Africa with adding to the pressure for change. I don't, never saw Castro as a hero. I think he played a very important role in the anti-apartheid struggle by defeating the South African army with his Cuban troops in Angola when they invaded Angola. Uh, I also think he did, uh, he did lots of fantastic things for health and free education as well, and conquering poverty in a region where poverty and bad health and education uh, uh, and bad education was rife, but I cannot justify his human rights abuses. Over a pub in London tonight, the Cuba Solidarity Campaign pressed ahead with film night despite the official mourning declared in Havana. They don't doubt Castro's contribution. I think his legacy will not just be on education, on health and the social life of Cuba, which has improved tremendously over the last 50 years, nothing compared with the Bordello it was before. The revolution is about more than one person. The revolution has brought forth a society, a model of society that will endure because it's a model that works. Castro famously claimed that history would absolve him. What's less well known is the riposte from a dissident Cuban writer who settled in London and said history would absorb him.